Hello, this is Jesus Manuel Menegarza. I hope you're having a great day. Uh, I just wanted to cover in this very short video my impressions and my opinions in regards to uh, full-time RVing. There are hundreds of videos on full-time RVing. This is my opinion and my experience, okay? And um, there's different kinds of full-time RVing. Uh, there are those who have a lot of money, a significant amount of money, so they can live a very grand style uh, while RVing and uh, you know living full time in an RV. Others, because of their economic situation uh, and also maybe their health or emotional issues that they might have, uh, they have to live in an RV, and they live a, essentially a hobo lifestyle. Uh, and some are very proud of it, and others are just, you know, they just have to deal with it. They just can't afford to live in a house. They can't make that payment. They can't pay the utilities. Uh, they just have to live in uh, that hobo lifestyle. But let's talk first about those that have money. Hmm, a lot of money. If you want to buy a fifth wheel, uh, that's a big, big uh, towable, and uh, you want one that's 30, 35, 40 feet. Uh, those cost about, uh, for a very nice one, uh, 100, 150, uh, $200,000. Uh, comparable to the price of a house in uh, Fort Worth and the Dallas area. They are very, very nice, especially the more expensive ones. They have marble floors, they have beautiful countertops, beautiful cabinets, leather sofas, uh, big screen TVs, uh, lovely units, and you can carry uh, quite a bit of stuff with you. You know, that favorite coffee pot, uh, that favorite uh, outfit that you want to go out once in a while in, it can be stored in this unit in the closets, the cedar line closets at that, in, in these units. The problem with these units uh, for a lot of people is that they are very large. That is a bonus, and it's also a native. The problem for you, they're not very maneuverable. So if you're planning to drive between, and I've done this by the way, drive between uh, Prescott and Jerome, Arizona, there's a very curvy, 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 curvy road, and we did it at night. Oh my God, it was horrendous. It's very difficult. Sharp turns are not a fifth wheel or a Class A's best friend. Especially if you have towed on a Class A, a 40-foot Class A. It's very, very tough. So you're destined to take the, the big uh, freeways like I-35, I-10, etc., etc., I-40, because you're going in a straight line, essentially flat, maybe going down a hill once in a while, up and down a hill, but you're not going like this. So you're limited, again, uh, in your choices. But those limits are very, very nice. You can go to a resort in the Keys. You can go to a resort in, uh, you know, in Santa Barbara. You can go to a resort in Vermont, anywhere you want. And you can stay down there and enjoy all the amenities, the swimming pool, the uh, tennis courts, the golf. Maybe even they might even golf. And uh, it's very, very nice. You have all the hookups, so you can you take showers at any time you want. And uh, they're very blessed because you have that gigantic marble uh, uh, enclosed, enclosure in your uh, shower. Very nice. Beautiful. But what you can't do, you want to go down to that national park. They have limitations. They say under 30 feet, but you're 35 feet, 40 feet. You can't get in there. You, ha you can't go there. You're gonna have to uh, park at the resort and drive there in your vehicle, your towed or your truck. So those are the limitations. If you wanna go down that dirt road and you know it's rutted, it's, it's a pretty beat up road. They don't maintain it that much. And I've been down these roads in my truck. And uh, you can't go down those roads in those big, fancy, 
fifth wheels and class A's. It's just hard. It's difficult. Unless you, you, you may want to go down there, but your undercarriage, your suspension, your wheels uh, may be damaged. But, but then again, maybe you can afford to uh, fix things like that. These are my impressions. So uh, that's the big benefit is that it's plush. The big negative is you can't go everywhere you want to go. It's, a, it's very limiting. But where you can go is designed for you. It's plush also. It's sweet. It's a very nice lifestyle to uh, be at those resorts and uh, hang out with like-minded individuals. I've been there in uh, Colorado, California, and those kinds of states, and they are quite beautiful, those uh, resorts. In the middle are just regular folks like you and me, uh, middle class. Uh, you buy a travel trailer or a Class C, a Class B, you know, small Class A and uh, fifth wheel, you know, toy hauler, etc., etc. And uh, your price range is a little bit less than the million or five hundred thousand. You're you're spending maybe thirty, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars. But you can go a lot of places in those vehicles if you, you, you determine way ahead of time what you want to do. If you're going to take the kids to the national park, and you know that national park only accepts you know, travel trailers and fifth wheels and uh, classy uh, vehicles that are under 30 feet, you buy something under 30 feet. You plan ahead because you know that nearby park, Yellowstone, Yosemite, Zion, you know, Etc. Etc. The places that you want to boondock won't only accept those types of vehicles. So you buy a vehicle like that. You may even get bunk beds for you know all the kids, or not. If it's just you and your wife, or your husband, or your partner, you may uh, not decide to get uh, bunk beds. So you have choices, and you may want to go for you know three days, two days. Maybe you want to go for a week, maybe you want to go for two weeks. Of course, the limiting factor in a lot of these vehicles is the tank size and the availability of services to get rid of that stuff in your tanks, you know, dump stations. So you uh, have a you know, your tanks, your, your water, you have 45 gallons of water, you have 45 gallons of gray and black. You can stay out for about a week if it's just you and another person. But if you have a bunch of kids, it gets, becomes a little bit more difficult. So maybe you plan ahead and say, I'm going to that place that has the dump station and the water nearby. I fill up with water there and I get rid of my gray and my black there and I'm set and I go back. You know, three days on, three days I go pick up some more stuff, more water. And you're set, you might even go grocery shopping for all I know. So you're, that's, the, that's the reality of, of those, uh, the limitations of uh, certain units. You may decide, hey, it's just me and my wife, and we decided to get a bunch of solar panels, you know, three, four, five hundred watts of solar, have plenty of battery space, and we can go out for two weeks, you know. We got plenty of energy, and it's just me and the wife or partner, and you know, we can have a we can stay out there for two weeks, no problem. We just ration stuff. We don't take those super long showers. We use you know certain you know clean the plates a certain way, and we just manage our activities and, and, and make sure we are not blowing our water and tank and electricity budget by using them too much. There are those who don't have any money. There are those that are in the fringes of society and they uh, have make six, eight, nine hundred bucks a month off of uh, disability, social security, maybe a small pension. You know. And they are forced, because they can't afford a house, to live in a van. They're called van dwellers. There are a lot of people like that. And there are also some of these, a lot of these van dwellers are also introverts. They do not like dealing with people outside. Uh, they like being by themselves. They're not 
a lot of them aren't very social. They want to be by themselves because, you know, I don't know, some people are like that. So they're uh, living day to day, week to week, paycheck to paycheck. And they live in the van, they sleep in there, they have a couple, you know, blankets and they have a porta potty and they uh, have their little, you know, propane stove and they just, little tiny cooktop and they make their bacon and eggs in the morning or chop their vegetables and have a little salad. It's a very simple lifestyle. They poop in a bucket or a porta potty. Some, there's one guy called Bob Wells, who's uh, famous for the RTR, Rubber Tramp Rendezvous. He always proposes that people buy a bucket, line it with a little plastic bag, and poop in that. That's what he does. That's what apparently he does. But some people, I know my wife have, uh, doesn't like that idea. She'd rather, when we go camping, be near a toilet so she can go in the middle of the night with her flashlight and go poop there. And that's when we've gone tent camping or uh, in certain situations where we don't have a toilet inside the unit. So that's the disparity we have. We have those that have the ability to buy something super sweet, super nice, uh, a big house on wheels that's luxurious, leather furniture, uh, granite or Corian countertops, uh, solid stainless steel, uh, you know, uh, fixtures, and uh, plenty of places to sit. You can invite a you know, seven, eight people over and you can all just sit there and watch the game on your satellite TV. Then there's the people in the middle. You have a TV, you get, you know, maybe you have satellite and you have room for four or five people. And mainly it's you and your family or a couple friends and it's, and it works out very nice. You're, you're happy. You're very excited about the situation. And it's a very pleasant experience. You have your own toilet. You can wash dishes, you camp, you barbecue outside, you, you, little, you rough it a little bit, but you know, it's very nice. You get a bed to sleep in, you don't have to sleep on the ground. I've slept on the ground, you know, many times. Uh, my wife and I are avid hikers. We've gone into the Sierras for, you know, a week or so, and we've camped on the ground, you know, slept on the ground right there. And, you know, you know that's how it is, and it's cold, and it's hard, and it's, it's tough. Even though you think, you rationalize, say, I got a pad, I got a sleeping bag, but it's still tough. It's not a tempur mattress. It's not like the one I have on my tempur I love that thing. So then, of course, there are those who, uh, you know, low budget, you know, van dwellers. Uh, some of them even call themselves hobos, you know, they call themselves hobos. And uh, they... Uh, are living day to day. They and they go to uh, the little. They go to BLM land, live there for 14 days. Go to another spot for 14 days. Maybe go there for three days, and they get together and they hang out. And they have and they cook on their little propane cooktops, and uh, that's their life. And uh, you know, have a couple beers and call it a day. So it's a, it's a different lifestyle. It's not a lavish lifestyle, but for some. You can ask Bob Wells, he thinks it's, the, it's a great way to uh, be more eco-friendly and less, uh, have less uh, of impact on our environment. That's his opinion. So I would like to thank you for checking out my video. These are my opinions, my impressions over the last uh, 20, 30 years. Uh, I've camped in Big Sur, I've camped in the Sierras, I've camped in New Mexico, I've camped in Texas, I've camped in Arizona. I camped with rattlesnakes. I've camped with mountain lions. That was pretty scary. You know, and, uh, and of course, I always camp with my wife. She's a lovely person to be with. She's, she's very pleasant and very resourceful. So again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. I would greatly appreciate it. And don't forget, uh, it's up to us to uh, create the experience we want. You know, sometimes... Uh, due to budgets and you know issues we have at home we say hey we can't go camping you know you got to go camping you know you got to go out there in the world and enjoy it be it in vermont uh, florida washington arizona california uh, new mexico you know utah etc you got to go out there there's no excuse not to because 
Sometimes we just procrastinate. We procrastinate buying the RV. We procrastinate going on that trip. But you gotta go out there and enjoy it. Because this is my final piece of information. When I grew up in Silicon Valley, before it was Silicon Valley, <clears throat> it was 100,000 folks in San Jose. Now it's a million folks. Okay. I used to go camping in Big Sur and in the Sierras. Didn't need any permits. We just went up there, camped, you know, went in our van, you know, pulled, you know, pulled out our tent, whatever. It was no problem. Now, if I want to go camping along Highway 1 near Big Sur in those kinds of places near Santa Barbara, there's a waiting list for like a year plus. Hmm, that's a long time to wait. America is becoming more populated and it's going to even get more populated and more restricted. Uh, we currently have a lot of uh, BLM land, you know, natural, national forests and stuff like that. But who's to say that our government will start selling some of our resources? You know, all we need is one president or one uh, Congress to say, hey, let's uh, sell that and so we can balance the budget. Let's sell that and just, just so we can... Uh, you know, they can get oil or coal or some other resources or put up a bunch of condos. That is the future, you know. So you got to do it now. And uh, you also have to implore our uh, politicians to try to maintain some assemblance of a natural environment out there for future generations to uh, enjoy. I enjoyed it in the past. It's more difficult to enjoy now. But hopefully in the future, we can uh, regain our heritage and our natural environment and uh, enjoy camping, enjoy boondocking, enjoy it in our Class A, our fifth wheel, our Class B, C, you know, you know, toy hauler. So this has been Jesus Manuel Mena Garza. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course, share. Gracias. Adios. Bye-bye.